Well, whether you're dealing with a classic Corvette, small block Chevy, or a more modern twin dual levered cam, ideas are all the same. We gotta make sure when it comes to engine blocks, we've got a good specimen to work with. No cracks, no major problems that can't be overcome with minor rebuilding procedures. So the same thing that applied to heads applies here, the die penetrant, the magne magnetic particle testing, or pressure testing and so forth. Those all apply as well. So let's just say we've done that and we've got a good decent block to work with. Now what do we do? We have an old engine, we're gonna look for the possibility of taper with the cylinder. Now, there are all kinds of ways out there to measure cylinder taper. There are special tools to do that, but a quick MacGyver way would be to take a piston ring and actually place it in the cylinder at a couple different places, at the top and the bottom. And then as the piston ring is in the cylinder, much like I'm doing here, when it gets in there and you've got it uh, pretty much straight up and down, we'll take a feeler gauge and feel that distance between the ring, the, the ring gap and whatever that is, we'll do the same thing at the bottom of the bore of the cylinder and see how much difference there is in the end gap, uh, ring gap, ring end gap. That's a MacIver way of determining if you have cylinder taper, all right? If you don't do engine rebuilding, but you want your ASE1 because you make determinations on whether an engine's bad or not to, uh, to pull a customer's engine out and replace it with a, like a Jasper Reman or something. If you're doing that, you still want your A1. If you just want to be master certified, let's say you're a drivability expert, you still got to get A1 to get master certified. So some of these tools may be a little bit unfamiliar to you if you don't do uh, regular rebuilding, and it's been a while since you've been through a Votech school.